In this session, we will be covering how to conduct reliability analysis and also how to create a new index. Now, when we are creating indices, one of the questions that oftentimes or is always asked is, is the index reliable? Is the index valid? Now, to answer the question of reliability, Prior to creating an index, we try to um, get some assurance that the proposed index is a reliable one. So we can use the Cronbox Alpha procedure that is available to us in PSPP in order to do this. So I will now take you through the Cronbox Alpha procedure. We are looking at a possible binge drinking index. And we had previously um, renamed some variables um, that would be good candidates for the binge drinking index. And these would be um, binge one, binge two, binge three, and binge four. So I'll take you to those variables. Okay, so here we see binge one, and binge one is um, number of times the respondent has had five or more drinks in the past two weeks. Binge two is having four or more drink, four drinks in a row in the past two weeks. Binge three is how long it took them to con um, consume four plus drinks if they were female or five plus drinks if they were male. And binge four was. Um, in the past 30 days, how many alcoholic drinks they have consumed. So those are the four items that we were utilizing to create this proposed binge drinking index. So um, how do we conduct reliability analysis? Well, we go to the analyze menu and the reliability analysis is actually right here. So analyze reliability. And what we're going to do is to select the items that are the proposed items for the binge drinking index. So in that case, that would be binge one, two, three, and four. And we will also select here, show descriptives for a scale if item is deleted, okay? Then we go ahead and paste this to our syntax and we will run this from our syntax. Okay, now we see here a Cronbox alpha of 0.58, but how do we know if our index is reliable or not reliable? Cronbox alpha is a number that ranges from between zero and one, and one would be perfectly reliable. We don't expect to see a one. However, we tend to be looking for numbers that are closer to one. So 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, or anything between 0 0.7 and one would be considered really good indices. Now, um, as you can see, this, this Cronbox Alpha of 0 0.58 is not necessarily the prettiest Cronbox Alpha that we have ever seen. So it would be nice to have a higher Cronbox Alpha. Normally, if we want to improve the Cronbox Alpha, what we have to do is to look at the questions that we are, uh, we are using to comprise our index to see if any of those questions is not really a good fit and is causing the Cronbox Alpha to be low. It is possible that a question is not a good fit and if we remove it, our Cronbox Alpha could actually be higher. What we do to find out which item to remove is to actually look at this section of this item to total statistics table. And it is the column that says Cronbox Alpha if item deleted. And what we're looking for is the question where when we remove it, our Cronbox Alpha actually increases. So our current Cronbox Alpha is 0.58. And if you look through the table, there is only one item where if you take it out, the Cronbox Alpha actually jumps up to a number that is higher than 0.58. And it would be the question that asks, how long to consume four plus drinks? And this would actually be binge three. So 
what we're going to do is we are going to redo our reliability analysis without binge three to see what our new convex alpha will be if we take out binge three. So all we have to do is copy the syntax, paste it, and remove binge three. So now I'm going to run the reliability analysis with binge one, binge two, and binge four. So go ahead, select, run selection, and we see our new convex alpha is actually 0 0.80. Um, and so remember we said that we try to have alpha of 0.7 or above, 0.8 or above is actually quite good. And so we are in a very, very good neighborhood where we're comfortable. If you look at convex alpha, if item is deleted, you'll notice that if we were to re remove um, binge 2, convex alpha would move from 0.80 to 0.82. However, that's not an action that I'm actually willing to take because the increase in alpha is so small, it does not necessarily justify removing an entire item. Um, normally, we would we try to, to keep as many of our original items or questions in our scale um, and also get a good alpha. So since I already have a good alpha, I'm not going to try to um, remove any more items. So at this point, with this alpha, we are actually in a pretty good position to actually go ahead and create our binge drinking index using items binge one, binge two, and binge four. So that is how you conduct reliability analysis prior to actually creating your index. Once we have completed our reliability analysis, we are able to actually move on to the creation of our indices. Now, one of the limitations with the PSPP software is that there is no process that um, automatically creates your index and um, makes it a new variable in your data file. And so um, we will have to um, pretty much imitate um, or do a manual process that will allow us to um, create an index. So in order to create an index, we have to actually go through two steps. First, we have to standardize um, the variables that we would like to utilize. And then we are going to um, then compute a new variable using the standardized variables. So um, and this is pretty much how you would manually do a factor analysis procedure. Um, but in doing the factor analysis, if we were to run the factor analysis, um, we wouldn't actually see a new value, so we'd have to actually do it manually. And so that is what we are going to uh, attempt to do now. All right, so the first step then is to standardize the variable. How do we standardize the variable? What we're going to do is to convert each individual's response on the um, scale items, binge one, binge two, and binge four, we're going to convert them from raw scores to z-scores. And z-scores are actually one of the ways um, of standardizing. So that's pretty much putting everything on the same scale. So um, what we will do is we are going to use the descriptives menu to create the z-scores and save those variables as new variables in the data set. How do we do that? Analyze descriptive statistics, descriptives. So analyze descriptive statistics, descriptives. Go ahead and click on that. And what we're going to select are the, the variables, binge one, because remember now, we were excluding binge three, so it's going to be, be binge one, binge two, and binge four, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to say, save the, the z-scores of selected variables as new variables. So as you can see, we are going to compute z-scores for binge one, binge two, and binge four, and they are going to be saved as... Um, Z scores. 
please note that there are some statistics here you are able to actually generate pretty much most of the description statistics that you um that you 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 were would have been able to do in the frequency distribution procedure you can also get some of those descriptive statistics but bear in mind that our primary reason for using this menu right now is to create our z score so we we'll go ahead and click paste and we will use our syntax to run this selection so here you see that the new variables that are created are z binge one z binge two and z binge four so once we see that those variables are created um we see that for these um variables these are the number of responses, and this was the scale that they were originally on. They were on a scale of one to six, right? When variables have been standardized, they now have, instead of these means, they will have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So all these, each of those variables will now have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So what we will do now is to go to our data file to see our new Z scores. So this is now Z binge one, Z binge two, Z binge three, or sorry, Z binge four, right? And if you go to the data view for this variable, it's going to be at the very end. You will see that the 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 the, the, the scores are literally um, ranging from, as you can see, instead of on a scale of one to five, now the numbers are actually smaller numbers, pretty much, or ranging from one to six, they are smaller numbers, um, and that is because again, the the mean is zero the standard deviation is, is one but what happened is that all of these values are now being transformed because originally they were um ordinal measures they have now been transformed to interval measures which enables us to utilize those measures to um create our scale so now that we have our standardized measures here what we're going to do now is to actually go ahead and compute our index. So let us go back to the variable view. So we're going to go to transform, compute. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a index called binge underscore drinking underscore index. So we're creating a binge drinking index. And we are going to make the binge drinking index is going to be equal to Z binge one plus Z binge two plus Z binge four. So what we have created, we will be doing is to create a summed standardized index because we have standardized the values and now we are going to be adding them up to create our binge drinking index so that's all we have to do so we can go ahead and click paste go to our syntax so here you see compute binge drinking index and it's going to be equal to z binge one plus z binge two plus z binge four go ahead and select that run that selection new index has been computed and you should see in your data file now a new variable calls called called binge drinking index so i'm going to just put in our um, labels here to say binge drink 
index. So I'm just putting in the, 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 the um for the participants. So if you go to the data view, you will notice now that the binge drinking index has been computed, right? And you notice that it's it's listwise listwise exclusion. So pretty much um what happened is that if persons did not answer all questions, then they would not have been given a binge drinking score. So you notice now that scores are computed. So this is now a sum, the sum of these three cells. But the, the index is only computed for persons who had answered this, the questions, all the questions related that, that went into the binge drinking index. So this is how you would create an index in PSPP, and this is manually. First, we standardize our variables, and then we actually use a transform menu to compute a new variable.